AMBR is cut Paul McCaffrey and FP Santangelo from their lineup. As radio has been changing, and it continues to change, especially in the Bay Area sports scene. Probably like many of you, I grew up listening to KMBR. I would listen to it for the local sports talk and coverage whenever I could. When I wasn't in school, I would have the radio with me when I was out and about. I'd have it in the car. I listened to it in the background while I was doing my homework. You know, KMBR, for better or for worse, has been a big part of my youth into adulthood. And this was a big move for KMBR. Cutting back and we don't know what their lineup looks like. And to be honest, I don't listen to KMBR very much anymore. I don't listen to very much sports radio anymore. I had shifted over primarily to 95.7 The Game. And there are obvious reasons for that because KMBR was no longer the sports leader. They were not the only game in town. They had a real competitor, and then the game actually gave you more sports than KMBR did. Well, so much just changed in both stations. I was going to do a review of the two head-to-head, -head, KMBR versus the game. But back when Damon Bruce and Ray Ratto were laid off, I lost the motivation to do that. And at this point, there's just been so much turnover. I mean, it's a historical day in the history of KMBR, and I'll say why. I was not and have not been a fan of Murph and Mac. And if you remember back to the old days, Gary Ratnich would actually call it the Mac and Murph show, or he would say Mac and Murph. And I was bawling when he would do that. I grew up with Ralph, Gary, and actually Larry Kruger on KMBR. It wasn't until several years later that they paired up Brian Murphy and Paul McCaffrey together, and they had a show in the mornings, Murphy and Mac, for 18 years. And the show was not my cup of tea. It was not my type of sports show it didn't float my boat but I do have to respect the 18 year run they had it's an accomplishment and you had to do something right to stay on for 18 years when there has been so much change and has been so much turnover I mean you just look at the game in in the years they've had the morning show, look at all the change they had. Remember the Rise Guys? And then they had the experiment of, this was bad. It was Chris Townsend, and I do like Chris Townsend. It was just the pairing didn't work at all. It was Chris Townsend, Aubrey Huff, and Rick Buecher guy who's primarily basketball in Rick Buecher and then Aubrey Huff who was a former baseball player with the Giants sorry it just didn't work and you knew it wasn't going to work then it was Joe Lowe and Dibbs and now it's Bonte Hill and Joe Shasky well, while all, there was all that change with the game, KMBR continued to have the same duo of Murph and Mac. And my criticism of Murph and Mac was they're too dependent on guests. And you should know what I mean by that. Their lineup would be stacked full of guests because, in my opinion, they could not carry a show well enough on their own to keep the audience's attention. And you know where I'm going, Mike Kruko and 
Dwayne Kuyper, and especially an over-reliance on Mike Kruko. Too much Mike Kruko. We all enjoy him. He is entertaining. He's a, a character. And you do learn a lot. I and mean, there's no doubt. You learn a tremendous amount from Mike Kruko watching the games. A brilliant pitching mind. And as good of a pitcher as he was, a better announcer than a pitcher, Mike Kruko. They had 18 years together, and it's ended. And if you asked me which I would have rather seen go, it would have been Murphy, to be honest. McCaffrey, I'm not saying had the greatest sports knowledge, but he was more entertaining because when you're on the radio, it's not just about knowledge. You have to be entertaining on some level. And McCaffrey was more entertaining. I think paired up with maybe a different partner, it could have been better. And he even had his podcast, the uh, Polly's podcast that you'd hear occasionally because he was very good with music. He had talent in the music department. He made the songs and the parodies. And hey, I have to give him credit for the songs like Linza Come. You know, remember that fondly. So I thought he was still very popular, but we don't even know. You know, it's hard to even know the reasons or if there is any logic. It's just financial with these decisions now when you have radio announcers get cut like they do. Is it based on performance? Probably not. It's usually just a matter of money. I was actually going through some of my old KMBR newsletters, the teen KMBR newsletters from over 20 years ago. And I was going through them and there was an event and the two announcers I saw there, broadcasters, radio personalities on KMBR, or whatever you want to call them, were Larry Kruger and Polly Mack. Those were the two. It was fall 2001. So that tells you actually how long he's been with the station. That would make him the second longest tenured announcer at KMBR to Tom Tolbert. Amazing. Because he was on 1050, not 680. So he had an extremely long run with KMBR. And you just look at all the guys who are gone now, who had been there so many years. You can go back to Rod Brooks. And I was upset when Larry Kruger got let go a second time. And I have to take a quick shot at Tom Dolbert was, he said it was difficult seeing Rod and Larry go. But he said a little comment on the side that, well, sometimes Larry goes in with his deep dives. He goes too deep with his deep dives. And I'm like, seriously? That's what I love about Larry is the deep dives. That's why Larry's the best pound for pound sports radio host that there was. And you could argue is. And you know what's funny is that Larry on the Krug show has done so well that he's outsubscribed KMBR. The entire station, he has outsubscribed them. And I know they're new to live streaming, but they're not doing very well live streaming. The game is blowing them out of the water. And they, sure, they started much earlier than KMBR. But it's not particularly close between 95.7 and the game. And I also recommend Damon had a great uh, commentary on this too, Damon Bruce. You know, I grew up with Larry, and then when Larry got fired because of his comments on Sports Phone, Giants post game, then Damon came in and 
I'll say Damon's my favorite all time came be our host because he wasn't a homer he wasn't rooting for any of the teams he was just being honest with what he saw and he brought more of that midwest east coast feel to the radio which was very refreshing and something that was needed and he made the comment today which I respect it that he said if he got paid well enough he would have gladly stayed on for the night show on sports phone 680 but getting back to McCaffrey here I am I mean I could talk about this just for hours and hours and hours I should scan in my old KMBR newsletters just so other people could enjoy them and just see the pictures and the memories. I mean, I have one that said, basically, Pac Bell Park, the house that Ralph built. I mean, some other guys have to appreciate that. And, you know, I almost fell out of my chair laughing, though, honestly, when I saw that, the house that Ralph built. And he's got a construction hat on. But really, I could talk about this all day. KMBR and the history of it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I got to talk about FP here as well. FP not nearly with KMBR as long as Paul McCaffrey, but he does hold a special place in our giant hearts, doesn't he? As a former player, he brought something different to the game. I mean, I didn't enjoy him as much as Larry or Damon, but I certainly respected what FP brought. I mean, purely really as a baseball guy, as a former player and his experience. But what I most remember about FP was he came on in 2010. That's what I remember the most about FP. You know, eventually he would leave because he was hired by the Washington Nationals to be one of their announcers. But that first season, that was a magical year because FP came on at night and then you had the first season of Marty Lurie. Is if you ever felt like, okay, if anyone was a good luck charm, or if anyone who put the Giants over the top, let's give Marty Lurie the credit. That was one of the best hires KMBR ever made. But this was FP's second run with KMBR. He did a lot of announcing this last season. I couldn't believe how much play by play he was doing and Maybe you will still have some role with the Giants. I mean, he'll find something to do. I mean, both of these guys are talented. Paul McCaffrey, between sports and pop culture and music, he could go in a lot of different directions with podcasts. I mean, he had his own podcast on KMBR itself. And then FP could go into broadcasting. He can do something with the Giants still or... He's got other options. But the message is clear. You can't be comfortable in radio. That's what Damon was talking about. And no one's job is safe unless maybe you're Tom Tolbert. Maybe. And your days are numbered on sports radio. So that's it for now. I could talk about this for hours and we can take it up in future episodes again. But again, if you didn't hear it, Paul McCaffrey, Murph and Mac are split up now. He is out at KMBR. FP Santangelo is out a second time. And actually one last thing, two last things, is that the six to 10 slot is gone on KMBR. It has been gone, uh, the evening slot on the game now, for most of the year. When the game did major cutbacks. 
but that is hard to believe and for me that was my favorite slot because you know you're in school you have a job you're not listening to sports or maybe a little here and there but it's the night show was the best time slot and that often brought out I shouldn't just say often it did bring out the best callers and the most passionate fans over the years whether it was a salty balty or whoever it was Roy from San Leandro that's one I mean Roy's voice you know Roy's voice you could pick out many people over the years that called during the night shows but no more sports phone on KMBR that ends a long long run of decades and although I didn't listen to it very much wow it's sad to see it go no more no more hot stove talk no more sports talk after 6 p.m. that's an early time to close shop and then the last thing I'll say in closing here is then you know, it's musical chairs and all these guys keep switching stations and John Dickinson has moved from 95.7 to KMBR and I'm a big JD fan I wish there were more guys like John Dickinson. Total pro, and he can cover all the sports. He usually does the most on NBA. I enjoy his conversations and commentaries on all three sports. He can talk about them intelligently, and he covers them all very well. That was a nice little pickup for KMBR, but you know, the scene has changed the world of sports broadcasting and announcing has changed radios days are coming to an end you can see the end coming and if you're one of those announcers on KMBR or 95.7 the game you're on the schedule for one of those two channels Your days are numbered, and you're going to have to start over, most likely on YouTube, and start your own show.